fun. Um, my name is Ann Rea. I'm with Oklahoma um, City Community College. I'm just helping moderate the session. So as you can see, you uh, can tell if you're in the right place here for Pete's sake, creating customizable OER for student success. We have Sarah, Mary, Sasha, and Megan here, all um, from OSU, correct? Yeah. And so I'm just going to turn it over to them. I will be watching chat. So for those of you online, uh, for sure, engage through that, and I will be keeping an eye on that for you. So much. Okay. Good morning. Doing all right. Yeah, it's cold in the room, right? <laughs> I didn't make that up. Y'all are y'all feel that too, right? It's cold. Okay. Um, anyways, my name's Sarah. I'm gonna <laughs> uh, with my colleagues over here tell you a little bit about our OER uh, process. Um, it's still a work in progress. Still a working process, we're still working on it. But what we wanted to talk about today really is our process, the need um, for OER adoption in our intro to speech communication course. We're going to talk a little bit about what we did, how we did it, and then um, the, the continued updates that we're going to make uh, to our textbook. So uh, the agenda for today, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm going to talk about how it started, how we got here. So, um, Mary will tell us a little bit about the adoption process, review process, and curation. Uh, Sasha will talk to you about customizing our book for our OET students. And then Mary, uh, is, I mean, not Mary, Megan, I'm so sorry. Mary, Sasha, and then Megan will tell you a little bit about edits and enrichment, and we'll talk uh, a little bit more about future planning. So just to tell you a little bit about who I am first before I take it over, I am Dr. Sarah Hollingsworth. I have been teaching uh, Introduction to Speech Communication at Oklahoma State University since 2018. And um, yeah, just super excited about adopting OER for our students. So I'll just pass it down. Hi everyone, I'm Sasha Hanrahan, and I've been teaching the intro course at OSU for almost 24 years now. So it's been a while, but um, I'm really excited to share with you about the possibilities of OER, especially in general education courses, um, when you reach a lot of students. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Walker, and I have been teaching this course for over a decade now. Uh, so it feels like a long time, and that's the truth, but it's been fun. So this has been a really fun project. So we're excited to tell you guys about it. Good morning. I'm Megan Linsenmeyer. I've been teaching at OSU in this course for 12 years now, and I just echo what they say. This has been a journey for us, and we've loved it, and we're excited to share it with you today. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, all right. So why did we... Try, why, why are we here? Why did we get here? Well, you've heard a little bit already today about the uh, disgruntled faculty and students with these wonderful uh, textbook publishing companies that we have dealt with for decades and decades. And so basically what brought us here is when I started teaching the speech course at OSU in 2018, we were still using an actually printed textbook. Um, and I think it was over $100 for that printed version, plus uh, online access as well. It then moved to um, a binder with the book in it with an access code. It then moved to just the loose leaf pages. So you, they're not even giving you the binder anymore. Uh, just the pages of the book with an access code. And then finally, before we made our adoption to OER, we were having just an ebook only available to students for four months, uh, not printable. I mean, maybe printable, but not printer friendly. And the, um, an access code for online material for $75 a pop. Um, it was ridiculous. We were getting fed up. And and we also were dealing with multi, uh, like, million-dollar publishing companies, right, that are supposed to have, like, these awesome resources for our students. In reality, they have kind of terrible online platforms that are not very user-friendly. There's not a lot of uh, support there. And, and um, yeah, it was content that could easily be made on our online learning management systems that students have access to for free. So why are we paying for this? Um, there were problems with the book access. Students really couldn't stand the book. They couldn't stand getting online. It was our number one complaint in our course evaluations. That's what students were most upset about was our textbook and the online um, platform. So uh, it was it was just difficult to access and to use. And students really felt like they were paying for their homework. They were just paying just to get online and do their homework. So we got fed up. Um, and so what we did, uh, starting in fall of 2020, 
we reached out to our OER librarian, Dr. Kathy F. Miller. We love her so much. Oh my God, she's the best. Um, and she helped us apply for grants through the library, through OCO to uh, be able to do this work. And she showed us how to use press books, which is really fancy. Um, and then in spring of 2021, our full faculty began, our full speech communication faculty, there were six or seven of us at the time, we began um, curating chapters. So we, we found all kinds of speech communication books that were OER that were out there, and then we began choosing the chapters that we wanted from them. Um, so it was a team effort. Mary's going to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, and two of the faculty members that helped us that couldn't be here today are Dr. Catherine Weinlin and Teresa Elwood. And then in summer of 2021, we continued to review and we edited and we put our book together. Um, it was a trial and error process, and we really got okay with making mistakes. And <sighs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Great job. Um, Perfect time. Perfect time. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we got okay with making mistakes. We're still there. Um, and then in fall of 2021, we adopted our OER textbook, and it looks way different today than it did uh, when we first got it uh, together in fall 2021. And, and we really want to thank um, the grants from Oklahoma State Regents for uh, higher education to. <laughs> possible. Okay, so I'm going to um, now turn it over to Mary. She's going to tell you a little bit more about that reviewing and curating process. Okay, so this overall process took us quite a bit of time, and little did we know at that time that it was really just the tip of this giant iceberg that we are now um, kind of considering daily in our lives, both professionally and I would say personally, right? We're only thinking about it. Uh, but so the first step that we did was just uh, like figuring out what text we kind of wanted to start using. So we really started investigating what was already available out there in the OER world. And we located a few, three or four texts that we thought these all have something to offer, but none of them had everything to offer. So we really just started bringing those in. Uh, once we decided or narrowed it down to those top three or four, we then started working as the six of us, the six people that were working on it at the time, we started going through and selecting specifically the chapters or the pieces of chapters that we wanted to pull from these texts. So from that, we started, uh, we were really communicative with each other during this process. We kept kind of a running document of here's what I like and why, here's what I think we could cut out and why we didn't want it to be an overwhelming read for students. We already were dealing with the knowledge that students don't always wanna read a ton of information. So we really wanted it to be useful, impactful to the point and really mimic what we wanted them to take away from the class. So we worked really hard uh, narrowing down what we wanted, picking and choosing and putting it all together. Then Kathy helped us kind of create like our initial version of our text that we are currently using. So this was, all in all about a four month process. After we decided um, on the chapters, then we moved over to editing. This first round of editing uh, really took about a summer. And at the time we thought, oh my gosh, this is so much work, but it was the beginning of uh, what we have loved doing. And so we really used the summer, uh, a few of us to really edit what we could. At this time, the editing really consisted of adding vocabulary links, adding chapter objectives, and then adding or taking away from the text that was in there that so it allowed us to meet those chapter objectives those learning objectives so we were very specific with our goals those goals came from years of us teaching this course years of us hearing and implementing feedback from students and really wanting to make this not only user and student friendly but really impactful with what our goals were so that is kind of the initial start of adopting and creating an OER text is that you really have to already have those goals in mind and that takes quite a bit of effort and knowledge. But once you have those, you make it you make it work. You make it fit for what you want your students to take away. So we didn't want them to have a lot of unnecessary information that we weren't focusing on to kind of bog it down. We really worked on editing that initial edit and implementation was making it objective focused. So although uh, we worked really hard on that over about the first six months until we started offering <laughs> this in that first fall semester, we were so proud of it, but we knew instantly that we really wanted to continue to customize this text to really be as useful as possible for our student body. 
And so uh, Sasha is going to talk to you about that customization a little bit. All right, thank you, Mary. So at OSU, there's about 25 to 30 sections of the introduction to speech communication class. And what it is, is essentially you can, you'll see it slightly different at different schools, but for our class, it's essentially like intro to public speaking. And so when we started working on our book, we started dreaming of the possibilities. There were so many options, and this is a creative bunch here. Um, and I think that's also important for me to kind of insert here. Um, this, this would not have been possible with just one person. There's no way this book would be as, as great as it is, and then like even the possibilities that we still have with just one person. And I think that may be a conversation. I'm not an OER expert, definitely not. Kathy is the expert, but um, one of the things that I think should be part of the conversation for sure with OER is the, the fact that all of us love our students and we love our class and we love what we're doing. A lot of this was unpaid labor. Um, and I'm not just talking about a little bit, I'm talking about a lot of it. You know what I mean? Like hours and hours of work and um, the grants have been super helpful, but we've just utilized them for other things, right? Um, so I'm mean, anyway, I won't get on, on a tangent about that, but I want to talk to you about how we decided to make this book specific to OSU. We had a little bit of concern about that because we did want to create an OER text that other schools could use. And in fact, I know of a couple that are already using it. I'm sure they were like, wait a minute, this is all OSU now. It's got all this OSU stuff all over it. But what we wanted to do was to create a book that students could see themselves. They could see people they know. They could see places they know and recognize. And so we started, actually, where we started was with um, the customized book cover. So we created the book cover, and it has a QR code that takes you to a page about our minor. So we don't have an actual major in speech communication at OSU. We're working on it. But we have a minor, and so this is an opportunity for us to promote that, right? Right here on the book. So when students enroll in the course, we get a little like, hey, um, it takes you to our minor page that has videos and other great stuff about our uh, courses that we offer. But so we were able to specifically design that. And then we went in and we said, what if we hired Pistol Pete? What if we got Pete to do some public presentations and we take pictures of him? So we reached out to the Multimedia Center um, for the College of Arts and Sciences. And Jason Wallace is our photographer in that um, in the college. And so he was like, absolutely, I would love to come do that for you. That's what I'm doing on campus as I take pictures. Perfect. And so um, I think it cost us, was it $50? Because um, we're on campus. Like it, it's more if you're off campus, but we, we pay $50 for 30 minutes with Pete and then you have to tip him too. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, it was still a bargain because we got some really great photos of him in the classroom. It was fun too. It was a lot of fun with him. He has to duck down into the classrooms like this. So uh, he doesn't hit his like fiberglass head there. <laughs> but um so we went in, we even crashed one of Megan's classes, and he sat down doing group work, which we have as a project, we have a group project. So he's doing group work, we have him researching on the computer, pulling up his visual aid, we have him standing in front of the room, and you may have noticed some of the previous pictures were from that as well. So we've been able to utilize this whole, um, and it has kind of been cool because the whole access to the photographs was free and Jason made it free to other people on campus to use. He shared it on our cast photo gallery page so other people could use it on campus. And I'm like, hey, they need to give us part of that $75. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway, we've utilized it also in our um, PowerPoints and our assignment descriptions on our uh, learning management system. We've been able to put actual pictures. Like I'm crazy about Pete, so that's one of those things that I get a little over the top with them. But um, but but there's other pictures too of campus and of buildings and other beautiful things. So we hired him. We got a bunch of pictures, and um, Cass also has other photo albums available. Then we also reached out to OSU Branding, and um, they gave us permission to utilize the um, 
the pictures that they had as well. So we had a huge variety of photos that we were able to then go back in and edit into our OER text. One of the things that we came up with, and this is what we got our, our most recent um, Higher Regents grant, the one that they were talking about in the first session, um, we got a remix grant because we wanted to come back in and add Mr. Pete as a student. So he's a student in the textbook that takes the class with students. So he travels through each chapter with the students. And um, so we have a, a heading, we have an image of Pete, usually appropriate to whatever he's doing. And then we have a little scenario. Sometimes it, it's for discussion, sometimes it's just related to the content in that chapter. But now they're traveling through the class with their mascot. And so he expresses anxiety when he has to get up in front of an audience and he uh, express each stress when he's in a group project and people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So they're getting to see some of the experience of the class through him. Um, now, just as an add-in here, this is new to me, um, and we're learning about it as well, but we utilized chat GPT to help us create the scenarios that, that Pete is in. Now, we give credit to ChatGPT at the bottom of every scenario to show students that if you're going to utilize it, you better be citing it, right? So, but anyway, let's just look at this first sentence or two. This is written by ChatGPT, and then I went in and edited it a little bit just to make sure that, it, you know, it, it fit, because they, they know it, but they don't know it, you know? And so, <laughs> y'all ready yet to saddle up and ride alongside me? I'm Pistol Pete, the Livewire mascot of Oklahoma State University. And I'm here to bring the thunder and fire the cowboy and cowgirl spirit like no other. And so we've got this fun element um, that students can connect with and it encourages them to get into the reading, but also see what um, AI is, is capable of as well. So that's been really fun. We put one of those at the beginning of every chapter. And then... Oh, here's some of the, the photos that we had for branding and cast photography. We're talking thousands of photos that we were able to go through and look at. And one of the things that's worth mentioning here is when we did that, each of us kind of took a chapter, we updated it, put images in it or whatever. And then we were like, wait a minute, what if we reuse the same image? Oh no. So we had to go back to every chapter and make sure, and there were some, right? We had some that were in like three or four places because they were good pictures. So um, we didn't, and that probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but we wanted it to be like all of these really rich, great photos. So we went back through the, I can't tell you how many times we've gone back through to do this thing, and then we went back through to do this thing. But um, we went back through to make sure that there weren't a lot of duplicates of photos. But I just wanted to show you some of the ones that are illustrated here. I keep putting, you know, I put Pete all over, but there's also pictures of our students. And so um, I had a student say, hey, that girl was in my little book class um, when she was sitting, looking at her book in class. So they see people they know or recognize in these photos, which I think is really interesting because what I think happens as a result of that is that students connect with the school. I think it helps create a sense of culture. I, you know what, I think this would be a great, I, maybe there is research on this, but I was thinking like in terms of like personnel that are worried about retention, like what does this do? You know, like what does this do at making students want to donate back to their alumni association? Um, because it, it creates and instills the climate and the culture and the community that we want to create at our university. So, and I think that's another reason that administrators should support this and, and other types of personnel at a university or college or community college should be aware of the impact of OER. So maybe we're not getting kickbacks in our textbook stores or our bookstores, but maybe we get a different kind of impact that's financial that, that affects us a different way. And so I think this has been a really powerful aspect of it. I know it, it gives me a sense of pride to have a book that students can see themselves in. And I know it's been such a, it's been a lot of work. I don't want to minimize that at all. I, I talked to somebody at, um, Northern Oklahoma College about it because I love OER now. I'm like, oh my gosh, everybody should do this. And um, 
she was telling me that some of her faculty is having to teach six and seven sections of class. And I said, they can't do this. They can't, they cannot create it. You're going to burn out your people if you put that kind of, you know, it's a great resource, but you've got to make sure you have the supports that back it up or that can give them a course release or something related to it. But I think we have just had the best experience. And as a result, some of our other, almost all of our other courses have gone to our speech courses for our minor have gone to OER. And so it's really been cool and they'll probably kill me if I'm like, let's go through each book that we have and make it like this. Um, it's just been a really cool team project. And I think, honestly, I think it's brought us together better um, as a team. Yeah, a team of, of collaborators. You know, it's created a better culture for us. One of the things I forgot to mention, but it, so I have a slide, so it can remind me, is that we are really concerned about accessibility. Um, I recently finished my PhD in curriculum and instruction, and one of the things that I um, I noticed how hard it was for me to be a good student. <laughs> you know, like it, I got to see the other end of it, like, oh my gosh, I have to read all this stuff. Um, and so it really kind of uh, created a, a better understanding of the need for accessibility of materials, right? Well, this came up as a result of a, a conversation with Kathy about um, alt text, alternative text for our images. So after we got all those images in, we went back in and put the alt text for all the ones that were necessary um, for understanding. So we created alternative text through a training with Christina Cal Calcahoon. Calhoun. Calhoun. Okay. And um, she helped us figure out what was the best thing to kind of put in there. So students that don't necessarily have access to seeing these images will can all get a description of what is there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to briefly mention is. Um, and then I'll pass it along, is um, we got a grant from um, Women for OSU. They gave us a $10,000 grant to create audio files for our book. And so now, every, and it wasn't just us, it was also our English uh, comp course. So now students will be able to read the book or they can click at the bottom for the audio file and that can be read to them. As a student, I can't tell you how helpful that would have been if I'm driving my kids around in the car that I could listen to the material. I think that any way we make it more accessible, it helps me, it helps students with ADHD, any neurotypical student, you know, atypical students, it's gonna help everyone. So when we make it more accessible, it becomes a better product for everybody. Okay, I'm gonna pass it on then to Megan. I really just wanted to start by echoing what Sasha said, like this had to be a team project. And so if you are thinking about doing this, I would definitely encourage you to collaborate with someone just simply because we all brought different strengths and different ideas and saw things through different lenses. Um, specifically, what I wanted to talk to you about is some of the additions that we made to the textbook. Um, I'm going to skip ahead here just to show you the picture of what I'm talking about and we'll kind of go over it. But after we taught it our first year, we realized that we really needed to make the um, book more student focused as well as instructor friendly. And so for every single chapter, we went through and added discussion questions and activities. And we were very purposeful in how we did this. Obviously our focus was on students, um, but we wanted to make it to where there was a variety of different mix, a mix of instruction, if you will. So some of the discussion questions they could do on their own, um, whether it was like a self-assessment, some of the discussions and activities were like a pair and share to where any instructor, whether our university or another could use it. Um, like Sarah, and Sasha mentioned, we do a lot of collaboration within our classes, and so making sure there was some small group activities that would help them to be familiar with this active, the information and still be able to collaborate was important. And then finally, obviously, we wanted some whole group activities. And so um, to echo what Sasha said, it was a lot of work. Um, we went through just different instructors were assigned different chapters to come up with those initial discussion questions and activities. And then our second summer that we had um, adopted this textbook, we went through and just hashed that out together to look through how could we build on those, how could we implement it, and make sure that students were really benefiting from the information. Um, and so I feel like of all the things that we've done, there's a lot of great things we've done, but I think this enrichment section is by far one of the nicest things we've done. Um, it's funny, as I was pulling just a sample to show you, I realized that one of the activities on this page is an activity that they had done recently at a conference or a workshop that they hosted on campus. And so it's been activities that have been usable in a number of different ways. 
Um, another thing that we've done to this next book that I just love is that we've added graphics. I'm convinced that this generation should not be called Generation Z. They should really be called like Generation Scroll because I feel like that is all that they do in my textbook. Um, and so this really goes to Sarah here. Um, she was our graphic designer where she replaced like all of the graphics that were in the textbook because they were very dated looking. Um, but then she even went through and created some new ones. And so I love this because selfishly, I use a lot of her graphics like in my slides when I'm teaching classes, but also because of the benefit that it gives to students. But if they are in the textbook taking a quiz and they are doing that good old scroll that they're so good at, at least they're catching things that hopefully catch their attention. I love that we had gone with kind of similar OSU colors and the branding aspect, but it's just easy ways for them to be able to just quickly digest the information because that is the world that we live in right now. It's got to be something that they can capture pretty quick. And so I highly recommend hiring and getting a grant and hiring Sarah. <laughs> but you can't have a perk, just have a with craft with it. Um, as you a Other things that we've done to make this a student focused program is number one is we redid our quizzes. So once we had a new OER, we realized that we don't have quiz questions anymore. And so again, as a team, we created those. We purposely made those application based. We did not want to put questions on there that students could just Google, find their answer. We purposely wanted to make it to where they actually did have to open up the textbook and go to those, even if they still did like a search, like a search and find type of feature, we still wanted it to go in. We've since gone back and added kind of a better mixture of multiple choice and definition, but application based was definitely where our heart was. Another thing that we did is that we tried to add some depth to it. Um, I don't know if this is valid or not, but sometimes when I talk to friends about OER, they'll tell me they're worried about the quality of it or if they're thinking that we get from like a published textbook. And so that has stayed like forefront for me. Um, I, they'll probably shake their heads when I say this, but I'm always like asking, can we add this theory? Can we add like this principle? Can we insert this in the chapter two? The way they're like, hey, the book's done. I'm like, well, I wish I know it's not, but, um, but we purposely have done that. One specific thing that we did as um, so we started with chapter one and just went through it to make sure that as students started a new semester and they got into a new textbook, we wanted to make sure that those that would commit to reading at the beginning of the semester would find that the quality and the content was there for them. So that is one textbook that we put a lot of extra emphasis on, updating examples, the pictures, the graphics, and this is one place where we added a bit of theory um, to it as well. Um, you can have my notes really quick to see if there was anything else. And Teresa, who's not here, but if you ever get to meet Teresa, she is fabulous. She went through and helped us identify like different quotes that we could add into each chapter, which again, for generation scroll has worked out beautifully because sometimes those quotes will come up in our lectures and hey, I saw in chapter five this quote that when you know your audience, your audience knows and like it resonated with them. And so even that, and we did it as a call out, which I don't think I included one here, but we did it as like a call out where they could see it. It looked different from the text. Um, as they're scrolling through. Um, case studies were another thing that we added to a couple of different chapters. That's one that I can expect that we will consistently update just every couple of years to make sure the case study still seems current to them and what's going on with their culture and what it is that they would understand. Um, but I just feel like we've been really blessed with being able to make sure that we've got the depth, that we've got the content for our students, um, and really just making sure that it's a process that we really look at to make sure that we're always improving it. So I'll pass it over to Sarah to talk about some of those improvements. Okie dokie. So hopefully I will bring us home here. Okay. Um, so Sasha mentioned that we got a grant for, from the Women for OSU Foundation. So we are making audio versions of our textbook chapters now. Uh, we also are adding in a chapter on speaking in a virtual landscape, which is honestly the beauty of OER. Uh, we don't have to get a whole new book, right? We had a pandemic. We don't always speak in person anymore, right? We got a whole Zoom uh, conference happening right now. And our students need no, to know how to speak in that environment, right? And so we can just, we can write our own chapter and add that in. Or we can go find a new one. It's open um, educational resource for our students. It's really nice to just be able to adapt as we go. Um, we also want to work on adding in some chapter foci to make it a little bit more instructor friendly. Uh, we also we're working on student uh, friendly sample speech outlines. So Pistol Pete is actually doing the assignments uh, with students and he's writing speeches and we're including those sample outlines in there. Again, another part of the beauty of OER, we are the speech sample, sample speech outlines and speeches that we put in our text are 
our own unique assignments, right? And so students are seeing examples of exactly what they're required to do in our classes. Um, and, and we can make that really individualized for them. And I think Sasha mentioned, but we're also using um, OER options for our other speech courses. Uh, so those are um, free and focused more on instructor expertise. And I do think Sasha might be able to answer this. I think she was looking at the numbers recently, but I do think since we've put the open educational resource marker, Kathy got that on our class, um, we've had higher enrollment in speech 2713. And I think we'll probably continue um, to have higher enrollment there as well. So other things, some other things that are important to mention since fall of 2021 through fall of 2023, this is two academic years that we've saved OSU students uh, over a quarter of a million dollars. I know, it's amazing. It, it's amazing. You get so excited about it. One course. One course. One course. Yeah, just one course. Um, and so we're super excited about it. Our students are excited about it. They, they love it. They don't... Anybody else? They don't know why they can't have this in their other courses, and you know, I know there, there there's some things that maybe OER is not, in, but there's a lot of things that it is. So um, I <laughs> I really would would hope that we can continue moving in this direction. Uh, let me see what else is on here. Yeah, so here's a QR code to our textbook if you'd like to take a look um, at the introduction to speech communication text, uh, you could have it there. And yeah, I think that's it. I think uh, we take any questions. I like to have resources. Let me get, let me get the video. Oh, this was like class over here, good. Good, good, got it. Share our slides and then let's put it here. Yeah, and we will do that. Yeah, we can do that. Um, okay, so final thing, just some resources for if you want to do what we've done here. Um, obviously, the online consortium of Oklahoma, start there. Um, that's that's a great place to find all kinds of resources. Uh, Pressbooks user guide, so Pressbooks is where our book is housed. Um, Lots of trial and error there, lots of mistakes, but they've got wonderful user guides. And then openstacks.org is a great place to find um, already available uh, OER materials. So yeah, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? One thing I forgot to say to add in is, I'm back. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is as you are editing these, you can create a shadow copy. So you can edit, 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 and it doesn't disturb what the students are seeing until you're really good with it. So we did that a lot. We were able to look at it, everyone kind of validate, edit it, feel really good about it before we made it the version that students were seeing. So that's a really useful tool also. Yeah, Sasha, you wanna I actually had a comment and a question. So for the comment, when I was preparing a speech for this, no one told me there was going to be a room full of speech instructors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think our like? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm wondering if, if the students, I know, I know about the pictures and all, but did the students uh, help with the content in any way? Did they... Uh, Indirectly. Yeah. Okay. That would probably be a good way to help. I know <clears throat> Sarah just saw the other day and texted it to me that the library does have opportunities for students to get scholarships to help with OER. Yeah. And we were thinking, man, that would have been a great way to kind of get the student perspective in there. But we Part of public speaking is like analyzing your audience, right? Knowing who you're talking to. And so we did do a lot of like thinking about the student perspective, like what is this generation like? What are they going to connect with? But I think that would have been, and that is a possible opportunity for us to bring students into this process to, to help them. I mean, to help them, but also to help us um, make this a better product. Yeah. So I think, I'm glad you asked me that. So. I think they'd be a good candidate for the open pedagogy certificate with OEM. Yeah. Yeah. So we should we should follow up on that. Yeah. Okay. 
yeah. yeah. So some of the reasons you don't know about some of these things is because I've been careful about what I've scoped and thrown in their laps because they're already tired. So yeah, I'll be able to next step. But um, thank you so much for, I just am about to cry, I'm so proud of this project and, and the work you guys did. We're awesome. Yeah, it's it's so cool. But so the women for OSU have funded the audio book. And so what we see as a program here happening is that this innovation is diffused, right? Other people are taking responsibility for it, pouring into it. It's left the bounds of the library, which is one of our goals. I saw one of our open OK State buttons on the back of a student I didn't recognize a few months ago. And to me, that was exhilarating. Like, ah, it's 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 getting to where I could get hit by a bus. And it may be fine. It, it's just nobody's, well, it might be somebody in the world. It's not my fault. No, it's no, weird. It's an odd metric. <laughs> yeah, but um, with this woman for OSU grants, and they can God tell myself, so I'm going to just share a little because I think this will be encouraging for some of your institutions. We're an OSU system, weird because like OSU okay, C is is part of this, only not really. So OSU OKC has their own interest speech book, their own comp book, things like that. Well, the woman for OSU funded some of this stuff. I got a phone call to speak about the comp book. And one of the donors called me and was like, um, why is my kid paying for a comp book at OSU and BC? And it was an opportunity to say, well, because <laughs> we, we don't boss them. And, um, but as a result of that conversation, OSU and BC is flipping their comp class to OER and just turned in uh, a request for grants uh, through, through the region. So that's just a, a, a shares kind of shares how this impacts other institutions. And then also our role of being able to share that information back to the people who are running out of gas or still very excited and know your your matter to the place that you're realize. So uh, did you receive a lot of technical, how to use Pressbook support from your institution? No. <laughs> I mean, from Kathy. When I got it, it was probably worth mentioning. I mean, we didn't thank Kathy in the presentation, but we should have because I taught at NOC kind of just for fun for a while, NOC Stillwater. And when I taught over there, they let me change the book to uh, publicspeakingproject.org and that was the first time I had ever experienced a free book and it was a pretty it's a pretty good book it's still out there and still utilized but that's what kind of introduced me to the concept of OER so when I was um, promoted into the speech coordinator position I was like let's look into this and the faculty were like yeah um, because we had so much difficulty with the platform before um, the tech support that we were having to do as educators with no tech support background for uh, our students to deal with the publisher's website was difficult. And then students would call the, um, the hotlines for assistance and they would say, well, your instructor didn't set your course up right. Mm -hmm. And so that wasn't the problem. There were other problems, but they would push it back on the instructors. So any technical problems that we've had with Pressbooks have been relatively easy to fix compared to the nightmare of like, I can't access my quiz. My quiz isn't available right now. Or I don't know where to click to get this. And we were in a specific zone and we had to- like, Yeah, we were having to go through training every single fall for the new platform of the publishing company that is, a huge company that should have one of the best websites available, and it was not. And so um, that is not an issue anymore. So Pressbooks has been, it, it, there's a learning challenge, there's a learning curve there, but it's been, Sarah's pretty good about, I'm scared to do this because I'm older, but I, she's pretty good about, I'm just going to click it, see what it does. <laughs> and um, and that's been, uh, that's how you learn. And that's how we've learned Pressbooks a lot. Kathy's wonderful. She's also very, very busy. So but she's good at getting back to us. So it helps if you have somebody that's knowledgeable about OER on your campus to help. Um, I don't want to volunteer you to call her, but she may or may not get back to you. Yeah, but she's, for, you do this off the side of your desk. I, we don't have a robust, I don't help them very much. They, so the curious faculty can figure it out. They haven't gotten as much digital as they are. They so do you have Westbrook um, integrated with your LMS? 
No, you do not have grades. No, the answer to that is no. Um, we just put the link in our website, like in, we use Canvas. And so we just put the link to the book there. We put a QR code on our syllabus um, and that's how they access it. The question there, to follow up, you may not have great pet, but can they access it that way? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the question there was uh, along the same lines, not not great pass back, like if there's an assignment and you want the points back in LMS or something. But from the LMS, is there an integrated option that will integrate the book so that it can be accessible directly from within your course? Yeah, and I think that's, I don't know if that answer. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah, check text that. Um yeah, they, they put it in their dashboard and it's accessible through their dashboard. Which but then that also when Ann mentioned later, students don't maybe know that they have it outside the dashboard as well because it looks it's so seamless. Yeah, yeah. But yes, it can go in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was your question about the grade pass back or the checks? Okay. Um that kind of coordinates or correlates, that's the word I want, um, with what we were talking about earlier, like students having access to the book for a long time. Um, when they know there's this link, that link is always there. They can always access it. And it does come up in a Google search. If you type in 2713, which is our course number, intro to speech, it comes up in the Google response pretty quickly. That's how I get to it. Because I don't, sometimes I have it bookmarked, other times I just Google it real fast so I can get to it. All right, were there any questions online? No? Okay. All right. Thank you all very much for your time.